Greetings and blessed day to you once again, people of God, is the revelator once again. And hoping the grace and the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ is with you until the end of time. We are meeting once again in this exclusive dimension inside the Word of God. And I'm praying that the Holy Spirit continues to give you the energy to continue soldiering forward inside His Word. Praying also that you are given the understanding and you are given more understanding inside each and every presentation that is being presented by the Holy Spirit. And I'm praying also that the Holy Spirit continues giving me more knowledge and wisdom and the tongue to explain the level of depth inside his knowledge and word dimension. Now, last time we focused on the sperm donors or the sperm donor, which was part one, and I was breaking into serious mystic explanations that regard the life of a soul, the life of a spirit, the life of a human being, the creation of a human being, how men are merely sperm donors in this project of God. This is the project of soul winning. This is not the project of soul winning that I'm talking about. This is the project of multiplication, where I explained how God declares unto Adam, saying, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue. Way before Adam is given that authority, Adam had already been created. And the Adam, being a creature that had already been created, he had to come into this realm and be given a body. I explained that in two diversities of a body that is already created, which Adam merely possessed, and the body that is then created inside the womb of a woman. I explained that on the part where God speaks to Jeremiah, saying, I knew you before you were born. And I started explaining the process of how Jeremiah is transferred from the realm to the physical, and the transition and the process of how Jeremiah entangles himself inside the reproduction system and the processes of the creation of a child that is called Jeremiah. Now, I want to take you into the sperm donor or the sperm donors part two. And in the sperm donors, donors part two, before I get into scriptures, I just want to remind you that Jesus was not born here on earth. It's a reminder that I'm giving many people that celebrate what they call Christmas. Why? Because they believe that they are celebrating the birth of Christ. The birth of Christ was in the beginning of the era before the beginning of the world. It was not even in the beginning of the world because the world itself had its own beginning which was affected by the word who is called Christ. So the beginning of Christ is way before the beginning of the heavens. And God had to effect all those beginnings through the word who is Christ. So when we are, when we are talking about Christ, we are talking about one that bathed his own process through God and through the word. So, now, at a certain point of time, there was a time when an angel of the Lord appeared to Mary and he, uh, declared and promised that you are going to have a child. But that child was not through sexual intercourse. That child was through the Holy Spirit. That child was formed inside the womb of Mary through the Holy Spirit. Now, one would wonder if God has such an ability of creating or adding multiplication into this world, creating a baby inside the womb, why then 
didn't God continue with that system and not allow sex to become a necessity and just use his supernatural ability so that each and every woman can get pregnant without any need of men having to become intimate and also women being intimate with men. It goes back to what I explained in the sperm donors part one, that God having honored his creation, which is mankind, he wanted men to, be, to become part of the project. God can actually create a human without having any need for a baby that has to go for a process of nine months inside the mother's womb. I proved that when I was explaining the scripture where God is speaking to Jeremiah before Jeremiah is born. Jeremiah had already been created. What Jeremiah only needed was the body. God can speak life unto the bones until they receive flesh. Let the dry bones live again. There, there, there are so many descriptions of supernatural abilities even in scripture that i can use it to define the power that god has he created everything under the sun so whatever or wherever you find anything that needs a process for it to happen it, it is a simple definition that explains to you that god does not need your help but god is merely tolerating a certain system or a cycle to happen because he wants mankind to become partakers of the productivity of this world he wants mankind to be part and parcel of the project of multiplication multiply and subdue the world but before you subdue the world you must be able to multiply yourself now there are certain acts that happened in scriptures that displeased god and i'm going to be taking you into scriptures where a certain man that is named onan displeased god now in genesis chapter 38 verse 1 so that we understand this whole story about onan it came to pass at that time that judah went down from his brethren and turned into a certain adulamite whose name was Yira. and judah saw there a daughter of a certain canaanite whose name was Shua, and took her and went in unto her and she conceived and bare a son and called him a who was the firstborn and she conceived again and bare a son, and she called him Onan, who was the second. And she conceived again and bare a son, and called him Sheila. And she was a chesip when she bare him. And Judah took a wife for a the firstborn. Now this is the part that I need you to listen. Judah is the father. And Judah being the father, takes a wife for a the firstborn whose name was Tamar, and A, Judah's firstborn was wicked in the sight of the Lord. Now, how wicked was A? That is what we needed to understand. Why is A being regarded as being wicked in the sight of the Lord? It is not written, but it is then described through a consequence that was faced by Onan, who was not the firstborn, but the second but the second and judah said unto onan the second born go in to your brother's wife go in unto your brother's wife and marry her and raise up seed to thy brother now what is being expected from onan here is what the brother a failed what did the bro what the brother a failed was to multiply according to the declaration that God gave Adam. What it means is that we have to investigate through Onan what A failed. And Onan knew that the seed should not be his. Why? Because this was his brother's wife. And it came to pass when he went into his brother's wife that he spilled it on the ground. What is that? Onan 
knows that the seed is not going to be his. So he spills the seed on the ground. He does not spill the seed inside the wife. He does not spill the seed inside Tamar, who is the wife. And this thing displeased the Lord. Why? Because the Lord declared multiplication. The Lord declared productivity. The Lord has introduced a man to become part of his project. What is displeasing the Lord here is, I've created humanity, hoping that humanity becomes productive productive but what humanity is now doing is that they are now using sex for fantasy they are no longer using sex for productivity they are no longer using sex for for profitable reasons that profit this earth to replenish so how is man going to operate at the best level of capacity that i created him for so the lord slew onan at once why because onan was not being productive according to the expectations of god that is not what onan was created for by god that is definitely not what onan was created for by god what onan was created for by god is to be pro to be productive and onan what you have done there is what your brother a failed already he displeased the Lord by failing to be productive. So, Onan, you are supposed to invest your seed inside a woman so that you become a partaker of God's project. And you produce, you don't only produce, you partake, you don't only partake, you contribute with a sperm. And your sperm is valid to God. Your sperm to God is necessary. Your sperm to God is a necessity what god only wants from mankind is for mankind to become sperm donors you donate a sperm and when you donate a sperm you are signifying your contribution you are submitting your contribution you are applying a signature you are applying a signature that confirms that you are part of God's project. And when you apply a signature that confirms that you are part of God's project, what is now expected of you is to be profitable. God wants to know what you have. When God was speaking to Moses during the burning bush, he reaches a level of asking Moses what you have in your hand. And he said a rod, and said he threw it down, and it became a snake. And said, "Go and use that to demonstrate power." And he says, "Put your head." There is nothing that God gave Moses. I'm merely giving this description of example so that you understand that God wants men to be contributors, even in the area of soul winning. I already explained to you that God does not need the help of men; He can still create humanity without sex. I already proved to you that humanity is not created by that thing that you call spam. You donate a spam. You become a spam donor, not because your spam is important. Why? Your spam does not create a baby. God already proved it when he brought his son here that he does not need a spam. And the Mary became pregnant without any sexual conduct, without any sexual activity that happened between Mary or whatsoever. I know that it's difficult for scientists or those that are theological, those that study theology to understand what I'm saying. Why? Because they dwell in the practicalities of realities that happen here on earth but god does not need your assistance to create so onan what you have done wrong here onan is that you displeased god by not becoming part of god's project 
honor me. You displeased God by not becoming part and parcel of what God expected you to, to bring on the table as your input. What is expected from men by God is the reason why God created Adam. When God created Adam, he expected to create an image of himself at a lower level. He created a, a God that is light, a lesser God. And when God created a lesser God, he expected that lesser God to reproduce. And when he reproduces, he multiplies himself. And when he multiplies himself, he reproduces himself. In the same way that God reproduced himself. Then when God introduced a woman, he wanted a part that can affiliate with men. He wanted a soulmate. He wanted a partner that can interact with a man at his level. But that interaction with a man at his level had to happen at a certain level, not of intercourse. This is why you realize that if Be Cain and Abel after the sin, meaning that God had other plans that he wanted humanity to multiply. And for you to come here and say to me it was sex that God had planned, no, it can't be sex. God had other plans that he wanted humanity to multiply. It means there was a capability that was going to be given to Adam and Eve to multiply here on earth. And God was going to introduce that dimension without the need of a sperm donor, without the need and the help of a sperm donor. Now, the transition or the process of men becoming part of the project of multiplying through sexual intercourse through sexual activity that was now the secondary project not even talking about the fact that man is contributing what is less effective i have already proven to you that the spam that on and spilled on the ground it dries on the ground after being spilled on the ground that sperm that was spilled by on and on the ground it dries up you have seen it you are coming from the world you have watched the pornography how they spill during sex how they spill after sex and they continue having sex which is unproductive you have seen it you yourself you were once a sinner. You used to fornicate, you used to masturbate. You have seen you have seen it how you spill and it become unproductive like onan. And after you spill, you can actually use a tissue to wipe yourself. Do you really think that what you are wiping can assist God? It doesn't assist God. So why was Onan killed? Onan, you have been killed because you have violated the laws of productivity that lead to multiplication through sexual intercourse that is productive and the sexual intercourse that is productive is that onan you are supposed to spill your semen your sperm inside a woman so that you become a partaker of this production but even if you don't spill inside the woman don't ever think that God was not going to be able to create these earthen vessels. Don't ever think that God was never going to create a baby when babies are created in the spirit. I'm going to be explaining about that. How babies are created in the spirit in the next segment. Now, God expects all of us to be profitable, to be partakers, to be contributors as sperm donors, and we shall be productive in the name of Jesus.
It's a generation. Embrace this. Come on, tell me. Here I am. Here I am.